Good morning, everyone. Welcome back to the Automate Corn Knits. This is a podcast about knitting, crocheting, yarn dyeing, sometimes embroidery. What else? I guess that's it. Um, lately gardening and just other things going on around the log cabin. My husband and I live here in New Hampshire uh, amongst the White Mountains and we absolutely love it. We're in the middle of nowhere which is exactly what we were hoping for in our 50s and I have three grown children, two beautiful granddaughters and a black cat named Meryl. Welcome. Episode 42 and I am recording for the first time from my new recording studio. Oh, I just put some peppermint on because I'm hot as always. It is not hot out today. Today's actually one of the nicest days we've had. We've had a super hot summer. Way hotter than I like it. Um, but today we are having some of the effects of Tropical Storm Isias, if that's how you say it. So we are getting rain. You might hear it later because I'm on the second floor, which is obviously close to the roof. And it is only about, I want to say, 68 to 70 degrees Fahrenheit today. It has been 85 to 90 degrees Fahrenheit with humidity, very unlikely in New Hampshire, at least where we are, but yeah, it's been tough. It's been tough. But anyway, I will save chatter for the end. I wanted to start off with my finished objects and then we'll go into, uh, I'm going to tell you some of the items, uh, items, patterns that I'll be releasing this fall and I will talk to you about some of my works in progress. I think I have two right now that I'm actively working on. Um, I did a little bit of natural dyeing uh, a couple of times. Not a lot. It's again too hot. Just, yeah, too hot for dyeing. Um, I do have some lovely acquisitions from a friend. Um, and like I said, some just general chatter at the end. But anyway, welcome. I hope you are all doing well and that you are able to get out more now that a lot of the um, restrictions have been lifted. Although I think they're all coming back again because things are getting a lot worse before they get better as you may have, uh, if you're watching the news, you can see that. I'm really worried about everything in the fall and how much worse this is going to get. But this is a podcast about happier things than that, so I do want to focus on pleasant things, like finished objects. So, let's see. The first finished object I'm going to show, I actually only have one because the other one I have misplaced for the moment, even though it's, it's very large. I had it today in my hands, and then when I went to look for it to prepare for the podcast, I was like, oh, it's missing. So I looked as far as I wanted to look before I got sweaty and dirty, so I just stopped and I said, well, that isn't ready yet anyway, so it's okay. Even though it's finished, it's not correct, so I have to take off the um, Pico bind off that I did around the hood. I have to take that off and potentially about this much of the rim of the hood so that I can make it fit better. But we'll see how that turns out. But anyway, my first finished object has been finished for a while. And you've seen this if you saw the pajama cardigan um, video, the little tiny short clip I put up. I put it on Instagram and I think I put it on, on Facebook although I might not have. Maybe it's just on Instagram TV and Instagram. Anyway, um, I did a little video just so you could see how it looked on and I called for test knitters because I had just had it sized in all the sizes. So I want to say it's available in eight sizes so it should fit most body types, which I'm really excited about. Um, a lot of plus, there's a lot of plus size interest in this pattern, which, you know, I, you never know what's going to be appealing or not. I just can't tell. But I knew the minute that I started to design this pattern, and it was started back in January and, of this year, and it was in Colorado, 
that I um, I dreamt this up and drew out a sketch. I did a swatch. All of it, all of this project until it got too big was kept in this beautiful linen project bag. But I uh, I did a swatch. You may have seen this before, but it gives you an idea of the fabric. This yarn, I've talked about it, but I love it so much. It's 50% wool, 50% cotton, and if you picture um, a robe or a cotton towel, you're just your favorite. The fabric is so similar to that that you just want to wrap up in it and especially after a shower or a bath because this is called the pajama cardigan and it <laughs> has been quite a project. So like I said, I started in January in Colorado. I dreamt it up. I imagined it being an oversized boxy loose fitting cardi with you know long with pockets that you can stick your phone in or whatever you need and I did some fun sleeves because I imagined this being perfect for warm weather so I did a fun little thumb hole um, with this part that rolls up and then some fun texture on the arms as well as the back and the pockets um, and the and the um, collar. I did not put buttons on this, although it would be so easy to add buttons, um, especially kind of smaller buttons because there are these natural openings in in the um, in the seam. I actually did a dropped no, a set in sleeve for my first version, and. It, what, it, it just did not look the way I wanted it to. So when I threw it out at the tech editor and I said, what do you think? She's like, yeah, I think that would be a lot more work and it's just gonna take a lot more time. And it, it's, it's very expensive to have patterns graded and tech edited. It really is a lot more than I ever imagined that it would be. So it's been a struggle, um, but this pattern after a lot of trial and error and I changed the sleeves so that it worked with this pattern better and worked with the numbers and right now it's being test knit by a lot of lovely ladies in all different sizes so I'm so excited about it. Um, I will insert just a little piece of the video here so you can get an idea of how this looks on. There is a lot of excitement around this pattern. Um, I Oh, I didn't even tell you. I told you about the yarn, but I didn't tell you. This is what I have left out of my... I want to say it took me one, two, three, four, five, six, seven skeins. So really six and a half skeins of this Mungo yarn by Retrosaria. Uh, Rosa Pomar is the designer of this lovely 100% recycled yarn. I just can't recommend it enough. Um, there are, I'm sure there are other yarns out there that are 50-50 like this, but I highly recommend this yarn for this pattern if you want the optimal results. But again, there are probably many other 50% um, cotton and 50% wool yarns that you could use. Oh, and this is a worsted weight yarn. Yes. And the color, this color is fossil, this gray, which um, I'm probably going to be gifting to someone because I think that this was done in a size medium. Um, 
and I think that it's just a little too big for me. So I am doing a second sample, and I have to do a second sample because I did change the sleeves. And now my second sample um, is in the same yarn, the Mungo by Retisaria. Only it is in a different color. So let me show you. I'm sorry. I'm trying to get organized, and it's hard sometimes. I try. Ah! <laughs> as my yarn falls. So here is the back of my pajama cardigan and you can get a pretty good idea of the color. It's a really lovely um, heathered brown color that, and there's the pattern. Not much to see right now, but I am approaching um, the end of the back, and this color, oh, well, I don't have the color here, but it's it's a brown, and I love it. Here's my, um, my little progress keeper. I like to see how much I do. Yesterday, I don't know why I moved it when I got to, oh, I, I just wanted to measure the stock in it, but I, I started probably here. So that's about what I got done yesterday um, on this because I am working um, on dual projects right now. So equally, I'm trying to give them equal time. But, um, you know, I only have a few weeks left for this test knit. So I do want to make sure that I'm keeping up on it because, you know, you have to be kind of similar at the similar progress to where your test knitters are so that when questions come up, it, it makes a lot more sense to you. I tried doing a test knit so I knit the pattern months before, and then I did two samples, but like months before, and then I didn't want to knit a third one during the test knit. Oh my, first of all, I will never wait that long between like being fresh on the pattern and, and testing because questions come in and you just can't go back to that place because there's just so many details and so much that goes on in between your patterns that you forget a lot of things. So really important that I kind of keep a better schedule with my um, designs and test knits and stuff. So, But this is, what am I on now? My second skein. And this is what I have left. So it's about half, maybe less than half. So I'm really excited uh, about this pattern. Probably more excited than I've been about any pattern in a long time. Stay tuned because this will definitely be coming out this fall. My second work in progress is my new Tedon shawl. So the shawl that I started working on and showed you the yarn from Sweden that I'm collaborating with Carolyn and Knut on. And I finished it really quickly. I worked on it exclusively for a while, but then when I finished and put it on and and the hood just was too much, too much for the face. So I got a little discouraged. I won't, I will continue. That is definitely something though that would be appropriate for, you know, deep fall and winter because it's a heavier weight, um, just a substantial, I, I love it. I'm really happy with it. Um, but anyway, back to works in progress. So, oh, I hope you can't, just thought about the fact that the fan is on and I hope you can't hear that. I think I'm gonna just turn this off and just test it and see. Be right back. Okay, I don't think I hear any of the fan noise, but if there is any, I really do apologize. There's one thing I try to do, because I know I have a low voice, is I try to make sure you can at least turn up that volume to hear me and without interference is, is actually really nice. So, we are on to the second project. And while I love this yarn, it sheds. And it sheds hay and other things from the fields that the sheep were eating. So it doesn't bother me, but it's funny because I'll look down and I'll say, wow, it looks like I've been in a hay field. 
So this is a semi-secret project. I say semi-secret because I'm not going to tell you what the end result will be, but I'm obviously going to show you what it looks like. So how secret can it be, right? Um, but anyway, this is being knit up in my piece fleece yarn. This is, uh, it's a worsted weight. And I've shown you this before because I was really concerned about this color with my skin. Um, but I'm loving, like, it's hard to tell. Maybe you can see all the flecks of orange and green and yellow in this golden yarn. What's this color? It's so funny when I try to see without my glasses because I can, sometimes I can, but a lot of the times I, I can't. Um, oh, it, it's called Wild Mustard. The reason I know that is because I thought that would be a cool name for this finished project, Wild Mustard. So there it is. Really highly recommend this yarn. It is a 75% Navajo Rambouillet and a domestic and domestic fine wool plus 25 percent mohair and you do get 200 yards per skein. I expect this project to take four which is what I have. So that's my hope. So far so good. Um, using some chow goos which are my favorite needles and these are 40 inch circulars in a US size 10. So that's a big needle, right? That is a big needle especially for me. Um, I used to always knit in big needles and then I got really fond of fingering weight yarn and that meant um, smaller gauge needles so but I like to go back sometimes and do what I consider a quicker project so here it is without further ado this is it so far as you can see it is a lace design. Pretty long, right? Let me try to show you the bottom. There's the bottom. But I still don't think you can guess what this is because it's a secret and it's just a little bit different than my usual. So stay tuned for that. This will be a quick one because the beauty, huh, the beauty of projects that are not sweaters is that you don't have to have them Graded. Sometimes you don't even need them tech edited. This one I probably would because it's got a lot of detail, but certain little simple things you probably wouldn't need to as much. So that is my second um, work in progress. Oh, and I have another finished object right here. Let me just take it off here. I love this cardi. This is cropped, so it's a little shorter than usual. And fluffy sleeves, huh? It is cute. I think it's super cute. I'm gonna have a tough time showing you though. As I get up on my chair, can you see the back? And then, the sleeves are cute. They're like a long, you can roll that up if you want, or you could leave it long. Um, drop sleeve. Like I said, it's cropped, so it's super cute with dresses. Got a little split hem on the side. And I have to take it off right now because it is that hot right now. Ah. I don't do well in the heat, ever. I feel like it's the... It's the thing that I, I'll call it whining. I feel like it's the one thing I whine about the most. Like out of all the things, that is the biggest thing. So I'm gonna put it back up here, but this little Cardi so far, I have only written it for the size that you just saw it in, which, um, 
I think is a size small. So I have just two ladies that I picked to um, test knit it. I didn't want, obviously, too many testers because that looks so weird up there. Because it's um, it is a they only have it in one size, so it's not ready. It is not ready for it's it's not in other sizes. So what I'll do with this one is I hope my hope is that if the size small test knit goes well, which so far so good, then I will have my um, grader and tech editor. I will have her put it, do it at least in, I like to do extra small, small, medium, and large, and we'll see how it does, because I don't want to invest a lot of money into something that may only, you know, may not do so well. And then, yeah, it's a loss. That's never good. It's hot. Necessary. Water is necessary. Okay. So we went through... Oh, gosh, I should have told you a little bit more about, about this design. What is wrong with me? So, <laughs> as you can see, it has texture. I hope you can see that. I know this is a tweed yarn, and tweed's a little bit... Um, I don't know it's harder to see but there's also some eyelets going on here which I think would show up a lot more if it were a solid color but I just love the tweed um, no buttons on this meant to be worn open very simple design I think this would be a perfect first sweater for someone there's nothing in here that is real difficult um, this, I even did something on the sleeves, uh, so a lot of decreases on sleeves are really complicated to me. They, they might say something like, I don't know, decrease two stitches, you know, every seventh row 14 times, and then two stitches, I don't know, six times every 12th row or something crazy right and I said to myself I know there's a reason that's done I know that these sweaters these patterns that are designed by these big big designers they are gonna fit you like a glove right they're gonna be perfect however I didn't think it was necessary so what I did with my decreases is I just made them every whatever row how many times all the way to a point and there's literally nothing wrong with it that way it still fits perfect as you can see it is a perfectly form-fitting sleeve um, another thing though oh and I use my own hand dyed naturally hand dyed um, merino wool. This is a super wash. Um, and I didn't switch off skeins like I normally do when I'm using my hand dyed. So, you know, there's a little bit of a difference. You can see that the front's a bit lighter than the back, but honestly, it's so hard to pick out. Also, the bottom, that you can easily see, is darker than the top. But yeah, you can easily see that on camera, but you cannot see that in uh, real life so doesn't bother me a bit but yeah if you were looking for an easy cardi cropped cardi that you can just throw over your dresses or to wear with high-waisted pants this is the one I think you should definitely make it's very soft very cozy oh one last thing gosh I feel like I can't move on it is called one love that's the name of it one love and I did accidentally two different bind offs for the sleeve Let's see if you could tell 
This one is Jenny's surprisingly stretchy bind off. This one is a um, tubular bind off. And for some reason, I started, I wanted to do tubular for both. This was the first one I bound off. And I couldn't figure it out. And I gave up and I did Jenny's surprisingly stretchy bind off. The next day when I went to bind off, or two days later when I went to bind off this sleeve, I assumed that I had been successful at doing the I-cord bind off. I wasn't. I was this time, finished, was very proud of myself. There's only one little mistake. And then when I went to put it on, I'm like, well, that one's tighter. That's weird. And there was a big difference, as you could see, because the stretchy bind off is perfect for sleeves and it's very stretchy. This gives a very neat sleeve, though I feel like this would last forever without wearing. Bottom line is you can choose which bind off you want to do for your sleeve. In the meantime, I have two different bind offs and that's okay too. Okay, so let's see. I wanted to tell you a little bit more about some of the patterns coming out this fall. So I told you about pajama cardigan, one love cardi. And I have already talked to you in the past about Frost Fairy cardigan, uh, jacket rather. This is much more of a jacket because it's super thick and has a nice big collar with an eye cord. Um, it's got buttons. It has texture. It is cozy. Um, and I used, was this piece fleece as well? Oh, and the sleeves are, are sweet. At least I think so. This is a super warm, warm, cozy jacket. I made it in this cream color. Um, I also, and this was in a medium, size medium, I also wanted to do one without the big collar, so this just has a regular collar, um, and it still has buttons. Oh, what else is different? This one does not have an eye cord tie, so that means no eyelets in the back like this does. So it's nice to have those options when you knit this, I think, because we're all different. But yeah, this one has the eyelets for the eye cord. Um, what else? So yeah, and this one also is a smaller size. So this is a small. Where's the other one? It was a medium, but I love this one. I haven't had this one photographed yet, obviously because of the weather. And I'm finding that that will be tricky, but yeah, super happy, super happy with this design. This one comes in quite a few sizes as well. So stay tuned for Frost Fairy Jacket this fall. This will probably be the last one that I release. I hope to release them one a week uh, over a four or five week period. And this will probably be the last one because it is the warmest of the four or five that I'm releasing. Then this is called the Road of Life Shawl. Because as we know, there are many twists and turns and bumps, and this one has some stuff going on. I've shown you this before. There is texture, a little hard to make out in this uh, yarn that I, I hand dyed. There's this beautiful ruffle. And it's just a super cozy, asymmetrical triangular shawl. So that part of it one side is longer than the other. So it's very easy to style. So you put the short side over here and then the long side will come right back around. 
Um, yeah. I'm happy with this. This is the design uh, that I used for the new Tiden shawl that's missing right now, but I'll find it. I'll find it today. So this is the Road of Life shawl. This one is all typed up, just needs to be tested. So if anyone's interested in testing this, this was done with fingering weight yarn. Oh wait, or sport weight, or both. Did I do fingering weight and then sport weight? I don't know. I will give have all the details ready for whoever is interested in testing this one, but I love the way it turned out. Yeah, super happy with this. Now this one, I definitely switched up the skeins because, you know, it's very, very variegated. So fall releases are... Frost Fairy Jacket, Pajama Cardigan, One Love, Cardi, the little pink one, and the No Place Like Home Pullover, which is my only child's pattern I'll be releasing so far. And that is the little raglan um, pullover with the lace panel in the front. And I will insert a picture here. I'm really excited about that one too. I'm excited about them all. So many of you have asked though if I'm going to get the No Place Like Home Pullover graded in adult sizes, and yes, I am. I know I mentioned that last time. It's just that it's expensive. I keep saying that, right? It's expensive. I mean, if anyone can recommend a pattern grader and tech editor that's really good, because mine right now is super good, but isn't as expensive, I would. I would certainly entertain that. Just let me know. All right, let's move on to natural dyeing. So my first session of natural dyeing, I used, and I'm going to say it wrong because it's not chlorophyll. It's chlora something. It comes from, it's, it's the green, the natural green compound from plants, in particular uh, nettles. So here is the green that I was able to get. I love it so much. I love gentle colors. This is a merino wool and this is a kid silk mohair. They match super well. So I have six skeins of this, which... Mm, I can't remember right this minute. I have it all written down. I think this is a DK weight, and obviously this is a um, lace weight. But I have six skeins of each. So rather than put them up for sale, I fell in love with them and couldn't part with them, and I figured I needed to design something with them. So I don't know what yet. If you have any ideas, let me know in the comments. Just, just uh, tell me your your thought for this I'd like the mohair obviously to be combined with the strand of merino so let me know I'm really happy with the way it turned out uh, also we had uh, some work done in the house and so Jim and Katie were here and Katie and I went and picked daisies one day like loads there were just so many daisies on the side of the road and Bunch and we dyed. I don't have the yarn here with me, but it was Katie's first time dyeing, so I wanted to teach her how to do it. She did great. She ended up dyeing um, a yellow and a green because we threw in some iron just to show her what that can do. And she ended up dyeing them, caking them up. I taught her how to knit. The very first day, she knit a circular hat, just a basic stockinette hat and circular and she bound, uh, well, I bound off for her. And then, um, I, did I bind off for her? 
I don't even remember. Maybe she bound off. Katie, did you bind off or did I bind off? I can't remember. Then I showed her how to purl and she was going to start a new hat with a, um, uh, yeah, those things. A ribbed cuff, a ribbed, yeah. So yeah, we have another knitter and then she purchased a bunch of yarn from me that she wants to make some things for people she loves. So that was so exciting. Katie, you did such a good job. I'm really proud of you. She learned like within minutes. It was the fastest I've ever seen anyone learn how to knit. It was amazing. Acquisitions. Yeah, so Deb. Hi Deb. Uh, she is T Hill Cottage on Instagram and Etsy. She has an Etsy shop as well. She sells some really great things that she sews and makes. And so Deb is so kind. She had said she wanted to send something for the last giveaway, but she didn't have time to make it. Um, so she did finally send me something, and I told her I was going to save this for my two thousand subscriber giveaway which we hope is coming up soon so don't forget to subscribe if you don't already and click the little bell button so then you get the notifications on when I podcast I really appreciate that so anyway Deb sent something for me and something for you guys so the first thing was some things for me so she sent me a lovely note and some yummy teas and then some really cool Cool. I believe this is cotton glasses. Um. Cotton twist. Yeah, this is mercerized cotton. 70% mercerized cotton, 30% rayon. Um, and so she sent a bunch of these little skeins in green and in this color to match, which I thought would make a really pretty little sweater for one of my uh, one of my granddaughters so that was so kind of you thank you Deb but she also sent this gorgeous project bag watch this I love these bags with the big ropes on them they close up and open up so smooth and nice and they really seal well but this is beautiful you could see her little her little tag I think you could see it right and inside she just threw in a couple of a uh, couple of balls of cascade yarn in green and cream and she included an entire box of this delicious tea from good earth sweet and spicy and she included some individual tea bags i mean a individual tea bag as well vanilla bean. Doesn't that sound good? Oh, and this is Deb's card. So there's her, her logo. T Hill Cottage. And all of the information if you would like to go check her out. I will also make sure I include it in the show notes because I can't tell if this is coming out or not, but I hope so. So yeah, stay tuned for the 2000 subscriber giveaway. This will absolutely be one of the prizes. And if you are a maker and you have anything that you would like to donate to that giveaway, please just let, reach out to me. Instagram is probably the best way um, at the Autumn Acorn. Just let me know if you have a donation for the show. We are up, I think, well, we're up to chatter, but I did want to show you I got my knit crate for last month. And you know how I love soft colors, right? I, I think I've said that enough. It doesn't mean that I'm afraid of bold colors, but there's just, there are colors that turn me off. And so far I've gotten two or three in, in two years knit crate yarns that were like mm, just too bold for me but I gift them and other people absolutely love them so here's an example this month's which I think I want to say was July's month July's yarn subscription shipment was this color whoa that's bold right that is bold I mean it's a lovely color. It's just, what would I make with it? 
This is Audine Wool's Interlock, it's called. By Knit Crate. And if I could find my glasses again, they're on my lap. They're always on my lap. I'll tell you what this one's made of. 34% cotton, 35% lit linen, 19% lyocell, 11% nylon. 100 grams, 351 yards. Yeah, I mean, I love cotton and linen, and 70% of this yarn is cotton and linen, so it's obviously it'd be a perfect summer project. But I am going to just throw this in with the giveaway because I want someone else to be able to enjoy these two beautiful skeins of yarn and I just don't think that I'm the one. Um, it also came with these really cute pins, little rainbow pins, and this postcard and here is the pattern that you can make this shawl with this yarn. So it's really a pretty shawl. Yeah, so there it is. I think I'm just going to include this in the um, 2,000 subscriber giveaway prize. It makes sense. Um, we have had all of the work done in the house that we wanted to have done. We had the outside stained and that had probably never been done. We've only lived in the house for five and a half years and it definitely has needed it for most of that time. We had um, the floors on the inside were redone because they, same thing, probably original to the house. So 20, 30 years old, I'm not even sure. It was time. And the same thing with the countertops in the house as well. They needed refinishing and they put that nice thick coat of poly on it, or resin I think it's called. Um, we also had a new sink put in in the kitchen, and we're having a new sink in the bathroom. We had a outdoor shower put onto the cabin. Do you hear it raining? It is like pouring out now. I hope you can still hear me over the rain. <laughs> um, if not, I may stop this video again and just check the, the sound quality. Wow. I think it sounds wonderful, but not when you're trying to listen to someone talk. So we had a outdoor shower put onto the um, the little cabin for guests to use. We had some lights put on. We had a light put into the outhouse, and then um, lights put into this room that I'm in now. So it was a couple of months of work. It was a long haul. Um, but we're really happy it's done and because the floors had to be sanded basically every surface of the house was covered in sawdust so the house had a really deep cleaning which is always a good feeling even if it's 100 degrees and you're dying through the entire process we're so happy it's done and we can enjoy it now because we are home a lot um, Let's see, my grand granddaughters are doing really well. I miss them, I have not seen them in, let's see, it was June, so it's been a long time, too long. And the baby is four months old, Blake Violet. She's growing so fast. And it's so cute to see Charlie make her smile. It's adorable, like, she can make her giggle, because she just started giggling. And that's about it. I have been designing like crazy. That has been my main focus. Um, it has taken over yarn dyeing right now, although there still is some yarn left in the shop if you're interested. Um, I do hope that you will have a wonderful day and a wonderful weekend. And I hope that you get to create some really awesome things. It's been super nice talking to you. I miss this. I wish I could do it more often. I really try. Um, but you know, you can only knit so fast, so I only have so much I can show you. 
But uh, yeah, have a fabulous day. Bye everyone.